everybody, it's Matt from Eastwood Company, and we're here at another Eastwood uh, Facebook and YouTube live technical demo. Uh, today, we are covering uh, the bead roller. He's doing the chat, um, and he's going to be answering a lot of your questions that you may fire out there as far as pricing, like that, or anything he can quickly answer. He's going to tell you guys any that he's going to save that we'll answer on camera for you. And I'll do my best to answer those technical questions for you today. So um, we are covering the bead roller. We've done a ton of videos on bead rolling, showing you making complete parts and things like that. I figured I'd do a, a quick little bead roller tech today. A couple of things I've seen with the, uh, our economy bead roller that can help make it perform better. And some things I've seen uh, beginners do that may cause them to get less than desirable results. So um, we'll have Joe come in here close, and I'm going to show you a couple things real quick. Let me just move this back. Um, we're going to cover this in just a second. So the bead roller has you know, the business end, as I would say here, where the bead roller is. You have your dies, um, and there's a male and a female die, which have the shape, when you're rolling a, an actual bead, there's a male and a female die which this is pressing the metal down into this lower die. And this lower die is going to have a slightly larger shape, a uh, slightly larger opening than what we're actually rolling in it. That's because there has to be a material thickness um, to, to, to make up for inside of that. So when you drop it down in, um, it, will, it will press the metal in. Now one thing that I want to mention, first thing, as far as tips and tricks and things I see beginners do, um, this tool when you're rolling a bead, I've often seen uh, these stripped out, this little adjuster here, which has a little bit of play in it. But what happens is you really can't go any tighter than what it is right now. I'll, I'll loosen this up a little bit. But you can't go any tighter than that. Metal on metal, it's touching. I've seen where people try to adjust this and they just keep cranking down on this adjuster trying to push it together to get a deeper draw in the metal or to try and do the, the, the draw or the bead in one pass. What happens with that is it causes this, either your threads are going to give up or it's going to start to um, move this little bracket here up, but usually the threads end up giving up the ghost before anything else. So when you're rolling this, if you're rolling something that's right off the edge, like this one here, the test panel I did, if you're just rolling edge to edge, you can just throw it in. You can just let it drop down like this. You let the dies touch. And all you do is you, you can adjust your adjuster here just so it's basically finger tight. You're just not letting the piece move up any, or the, the dies move up any. Uh, the back, the back nuts, or bolts rather, on the back that hold these bearing blocks. Uh, the top one, you can basically just make finger tight. So that way you can quickly move it up and down and adjust it. You don't have to crank down with, it, with a wrench necessarily. It doesn't hurt, but it does add, if you're rolling a bunch of beads, it does add some extra time and process. So if we're rolling edge to edge like this, we can let it touch. We can just tighten this down so it's finger tight. I'm not using any wrenches. And then we're going to feed it in here like this and roll. I'll do a little turn. You're gonna pull, when you're doing your turn, you just pull on this edge here. We're turning this way. I'm just pulling the piece lightly um, to get a turn. Now, if we want to go the other way to come back off of the piece, I'm just going to start pushing the other way. Now, if we want to make a quick turn, we're going to push harder and turn slower. Pushing harder. And it's a little bit slower to get that quick. And then I'm going to roll off. So we got our, our bead here that I rolled. And this is, I'm not drawing anything out to any particular shape. I'm going to show you guys how to make the turns and everything like that. And then, so you can see on this side where it's, it's actually pushed it down in and drawn it in to our lower die. Now I'm using aluminum today. Uh, just because it's a little easier to work with because I'm just going to crank it by hand myself. Um, 
so to save a little bit of time of having somebody jump up and down to help me. Um, the other side here, see our bead. So depending how you're laying out your panel, you may want this bead to be up or down. As far as strength goes, it doesn't really matter if it's up or down. Just by putting this bead in the panel, you're stretching the metal and it's, it's giving it um, some strength by adding these beads to a panel. So now our, our piece is going to have some rigidity where it's not going to flip or flop around as much. Um, it has, you know, for a piece of aluminum, it has quite a bit of rigidity now in the center there by doing that. So I hope you guys can see that there. So that's, that's starting uh, from end to end. Like I said, all you need to do is drop it down and you can just make it finger tight until it touches and then you can just roll it. That'll do a full draw in the panel. So that'll do the full depth that you can do. If you want to do, if you're doing something that's a thicker gauge metal, um, this machine comfortably can do 18 gauge, but there is times when you're doing a larger, uh, a larger bead where you may have to do, or deeper, uh, you want to go deeper, you may have to do it in multiple passes just to make it a little, a little easier on the guy that's cranking and to make it a little easier when you're rolling it on the machine. So you can basically leave a little bit of slack. So instead of me tightening it all the way down, finger tight, you could go just a tiny bit like everything up to, uh, we did a video with my, my truck. We did a whole entire seven foot truck bedsides with this little bead roller right here. So you can do a lot with it, just all in your imagination. So now I got it in there where I'm gonna start rolling and I got it down as tight as I can go with my, just by hand. Now I'm going to take my adjustable here and we're going to start tightening it down and it's going to start pulling in and I'll kind of sit here and watch as we draw in. You can see it push down in, I mean especially on aluminum. So that's, that's pretty good. Start right there. If we want to go deeper and do another, another pass. So it doesn't matter if you roll front or back. Uh, I like to roll pushing the piece away from me. That seems to work well for me because I can stand down like this. I like to do the, the pirate squint with one eye to kind of watch. That works for me. I don't know why. Some, some people it, it may not. Um, but good lighting is, is very important. And having your metal nice and clean is very important so that you can watch and see where you're, uh, where you're rolling at. Do you have any, any bead roller questions? Not, not yet. Okay, so if you guys don't have one of these bead rollers yet, it is our uh, little daily deal we have on the homepage. We do, a, we do a daily deal every day. We pick one of our favorite products. We give you guys a, a great deal on it. So you can go right on the homepage on eastwood.com, hit the daily deal, and you can get a pretty good price on one of these. So I'm doing a full, a full draw here, and I'm a little tight. So we're gonna go. There isn't much forgiveness with this. So if we want to do a little less, so that was pretty much a full draw. I probably should have went, done that in two passes because I could feel it was. It was uh, a little difficult, but you could see, probably like especially right in here, before I loosened it, you could see it's much more defined with the bead. So that's pretty much a full draw. I mean, you can't do any more than that. With aluminum, you're going to run into a, a problem where it'll actually score these edges, and you could actually tear the metal a little bit, which is what I started to see there is it was starting to score pretty good, so I didn't want that to happen. So I loosened it up a little bit, but you, you can always run a test piece through really quick like that um, to get yourself set, count the number of turns you're doing on, on, the, on the piece here, and that's very helpful. So that's for that. Uh, another thing that I've seen that uh, people forget to do or they, they struggle with, if you're having trouble with getting your, bean, your bead uh, nicely defined like this, um, say it's it's rounded, but then one end, one edge is kind of flat, like it comes down at a, at a 45 instead of being nice and round. What causes that, I found, is when you're, set, when you're throwing your dies in, 
Um, and I don't know if you can get coming this way, like straight on at the, the bead, at the, uh, the dies. What happens is, is if these beads aren't, and I got a pretty good setup before we started, but these, you want these to be basically um, lined up so that this center, center part of this is basically in the center of that. Um, if you do not have it that way, that's what causes the 45. So if it's, if it's heavy to one side, where if you have this top die pushed all the way in, like, well, before I get that, you let me know if you got the, good? Okay. So if this top die gets pushed in, it doesn't take much like that. Now I don't know if you can see it, it's tight against there. A lot of times people don't realize that. If you leave the bolts loose or, or any of these other three uh, big um, bolts on the back side, if you leave them loose or leave slop in them, it'll allow these, these shafts and also these blocks to move around if you don't have these collars tightened down. So you want to make sure that those are all nice and tight or snug and then you want to make sure you adjust these dies so they're just right because if you have it pushed to one side you're going to get it to where one side of your bead is going to be kind of flat and the other side is going to be rounded. So I have like a 45. So I like to, you can, if you're using these bead dies, um, basically you just need to line the outside of the edge of them up and that's usually gets them right in the center for the most part. So that's how I quickly get them set up. Now if you're using some of these other dies, like our, our, uh, our forming dies, it's not the same case, you're gonna to have to eyeball it and make sure that it's where you want it to be. But on the B, if you're having that problem with getting a, a flat edge on the side, that's what causes it. We're gonna have this top die either one way or the other, fairly loose, so I can easily move it around by hand. So the other thing that I want to mention is we, uh, a, a fence or a guide is something that a lot of people like to, to make up or use and um, we did sell a different fence for this. They worked okay but we found we were doing really long runs. Um, let me, I'll jump over to the other side so you guys can see this thing. So we found that way if you're doing really long runs with a flat panel or I mean running a straight line, uh, that one did, it worked okay for smaller pieces but for longer pieces we decided to make an upgraded version, what we, which we've recently come out with. So we have this fencer guide here that we now offer that fits this machine. All it has is two little bolts in the back that clamps it down. To put it on, you do have to take uh, the bottom section apart a little bit. You slide that on, put these on, you're good. But this piece, you can slide it out of the way like I did in the beginning. Um, and this fence is only going to work as good as the cut on your panel. So if you have your cut isn't perfectly straight, so like this piece here, you probably see there's a little, I mean this is just something I trimmed real quick with the, it was perfectly parallel with the guide. You have to remember your cut has to be perfect too. So if you got a, if you have a little section that comes off like that, where you have a dip in the center, your panel is going to tend to dip a little bit. Um, little tiny imperfections, it's going to take it up and it won't give you an issue. But if you have a big dip, or you have something at the end like that that trails off, it is going to cause an issue where it's going to transfer that cut right to your, right to your bead. Um, so you don't want that to happen. So to set up the, uh, the guide, it's pretty simple. Slide it to where you want it. I have another panel here. so. Now if we want to be basically, let's say close to the center there, like that. We want to do a bead all the way on the edge of this, like so. We can put this right on the edge there. I'm going to drop down. So if I like to say I like that spot, we got it right there. We have it measured out that it's exactly a certain distance off. I'll just tighten this guy down. I'm trying to do this so I don't block the whole camera like I was doing a minute ago. Like so. So bead roller 
uh, guide is separate. It's something you have to buy additional. Uh, it's not included in today's daily deal, but the bead roll itself with all of these, uh, these black dies I have on the table here, those are included free of charge with it. Um, but the guide you can get separate. It's uh, fairly inexpensive. inexpensive. So I got the guide set up. Um, I'm going to tighten it down just a little bit. So I got it so I can slip in there still. So you do have to keep some, some pressure in on the piece while you're rolling it on the, on the fence. Because if you just let it go, it can want to walk away a little bit. So it won't go quite as deep on this one. Let's start, say, somewhere in there. And shout if you got any questions at all so far, Randy, to give me. Um, most of them are uh, spec questions, so okay, cool. um, uh, just answer them quickly here. Yeah, yeah. So feel free to drop any questions if you have spec questions. Randy's going to answer you immediately on those because um, he can go back and forth on them. If you have any questions about uh, helping yourself get better bead, bead, bead rolling technique or a problem you're having or anything like that, shoot them over. I'm happy to answer those questions as well myself. Now I'm going to keep messing around here. So I'm rolling, and what I'm doing is I'm kind of pushing in on the piece as I'm rolling. By pushing in, I'm just keeping myself on that. That's a little easier when I got a, a roller. So I'm having a little trouble here. This is this type of roller is kind of a two-man operation. But, like I said, you can score a bead in it like I did here, so I did it not nearly as tight this time. So, I don't know if you can get in to see that bead, and I'll grab this other one here so they can see the difference. So this is turned the same way, but this one is not nearly as deep. But what that did is it made it not as deep so I can do a second pass. I can either pull the piece out and run it back through, or you can leave the piece in like this. There's no harm in doing it this way, but we can run it back the opposite way without a problem. Now that we have a line kind of scored in it, it's not nearly as deep as this. See? Cool. Now, I don't know if I've ever done this by myself before going backwards, but we'll see what happens. I'm a little off my guide here. So if anything, I'm de demonstrating much having a friend or a helper oh. no no we're good I got that for this little piece we should be okay here but your runs call your neighbor ask the wife the kid train your kids to do that so there we go now I made another bead in here a little bit deeper pull that piece out but if you could see as I was rolling I was kind of keeping pressure in like this and just guiding it. I wasn't pushing it in with this hand. I'm just guiding it with this hand and holding in just a little bit just to kind of keep pressure so it's kind of keeping it on this guide here as we roll. So if I don't want to go off the edge of this panel here, we need to loosen it up right here. Pick up on our wheel. And if you want to do this on all four sides, we'd want to count the turns. Before we pulled it out. But you can see, I'll see if I have 
use this one. So again, I didn't do it in one full pass. Forth and, and slowly work it in. Or if you're real confident, you can run it in in one pass like the first one that I did there and, and, and roll that shape in there. So that's using the guide. This is a nice straight edge, so it's pretty easy to roll, roll a, a straight line on there. So if you don't have the bead roller guide, the new one, get one. It's awesome. It's going to save yourself some hassle running straight lines on a, on a piece. And if you don't have the bead roller at all, this is a great starter kit to have. It is on the daily deal today, so you can grab that, get a great deal on it, and get yourself rolling some bead, beads and shapes and panels. Any other questions at all? Um, what about pre-stretching metal? Would you recommend an English wheel, or is there any other methods? So we had a question about uh, pre-stretching the metal for rolling beads. I did uh, share the video from your Model A okay. as well. So yeah. we. Uh, we had a question about pre-stretching a panel for bead rolling. Uh, if I suggest using the English wheel or is there another method? Um, uh, Randy did post up, if you guys are, are watching uh, the chat at all, he posted up a video. We, we did a couple videos actually, um, but we did one where I did a project on my Model A where I was rolling uh, with the bead roller um, a, bunch of, a bunch of just straight lines in a panel that became my floor pan and I showed pre-stretching. Pre-stretching, the easiest way to do it, in my experience, is to use the, the English wheel, like, men, uh, like was kind of mentioned in that question. Uh, what you do is you, you basically mark out the area where you're bead rolling, and you're going to stretch that area just a little bit in the bead roller, and what it does is it pre-stretches the metal around where you're doing the bead to give some extra material for, for the metal uh, for the bead to go into so it doesn't warp the metal. So if you've ever rolled a panel where you rolled a bunch of lines in, it gets like a potato chip. What's happening is you have uh, it stretched a bunch in these, these certain spots, but the area around those beads is not stretched and it's short and it's kind of pulling it all funny. So push wheel, you can just do hammer on dolly. So if you have a nice, uh, if you have a dolly, you can put it in the, put it in the vise. If you have a post dolly or if you have a nice stick metal or an anvil, you can hammer on dolly on that area around rolling your bead and you'll stretch the metal ever so slightly and then you can roll it doing the same thing. Other methods, um, if you have a planishing hammer, you can run it through a planishing hammer, same way. You just have to be a little more careful by doing that. You can stretch the metal way faster and you could overstretch it and could cause basically the same effect. Um, so, and it's a little harder land it out and then you can uh, have a panel that's pretty much flat right from the beginning. So that's, it. so that's our only question. This was short and sweet today. I just wanted to give a couple tips with the bead roller. Uh, since it is a daily deal, I wanted to shoot it out there and let you guys see a couple tips. Help make your bead roller work better and help you guys out with uh, making better beads. Thanks for watching and any ideas for future technical videos, shoot us